I am the author of Great Jobs for Everyone 50 Plus and uh, What's Next? Follow Your Passion and Find Your Dream Job. I also am AARP's uh, columnist for Great Jobs and I'm AARP's jobs expert. I write a column for the New York Times on retiring and um, I do a variety of different uh, speaking and expert comments on this area. But what is so important, I focus primarily on boomers. I look at people over 50 and sort of the whole challenge as they're facing this, this incredible group of population moving up the pipeline. And you know, my message is one of hope. You know, we hear a lot of doom and gloom and, and how tough it is, ageism, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. There are issues out there. But you know, for me, I think it's, there are things you can do to really make it work for you. And one of the biggest things that we found in our research is having a career coach. And it sounds strange, it sounds like, why do I need somebody, shouldn't it be just from within? But often if you can find somebody that can help you focus on what your talents are, how can you, I don't say, oh, you're reinventing yourself at this age, but you're redeploying your assets, your skills. And a career coach can often look at you and say, okay, they come to you unbiased, they come to you fresh and they can help you redirect your energy. And we found that people who work with a coach, and I'm not just making this up, actually have more job success because it pulls them out of that depression of the job hunting. So I think that's really key. I'm a big fan of fighting ageism with being physically fit. You know, I call it Carrie's Fitness Program because when you're physically fit, you don't have to run a fast mile or bench press a lot, but you have, you have to, you have some sort of fitness program, whether it's walking or swimming or what have you. And what that does for you, I think it's better than dyeing your hair or Botox. It's all about giving you that energy for the job search. It's saying to an employee who's worried, and one of their biggest concerns is you're not up for the job, that you don't have the stamina. What this says is she does, and he does, and if you can show that you have the energy, the vibrancy, and it gives this positive vibe that when someone interviews you, they're going, you know, I want that. They don't know what it is, but they know they want that. So I think that's one really important thing. It's also really critical. The other big thing employers are worried about is you're not up to speed with technology. And we hear that again and again, but you know what? It's true, and it's no denying. You cannot be a Luddite. You can't be sitting behind saying, I don't, I just don't get it. You know what, you have to get it. It's not negotiable. So whatever you can do to ramp up your, your social media skills, understanding it, it'll go a long way to showing an employer, even having a LinkedIn pro profile, or being involved, showing that you can do Google searches and things, throwing that into a conversation. They go, okay, they understand a little bit about technology. It helps. And I think, you know, playing nicely with younger people. I mean, they. They want to be sure that you're going to get along working with the younger boss. This happens a lot. So, you know, I try to tell folks, you know, please take off your parent hat. You are not their parent. If you're working for someone who's younger than you, watch what you say. Don't refer to, you know, you just became a grandparent for the third time. Don't let these things come out. You really want to focus on, you know, what you're doing today, how you can solve their problem, and really get off of that. Try to, you know, put yourself on the same playing field because. That's one issue, issue, but you know, employers also want grown-ups in the workplace. They don't want you know a room full of hoodies. They really want an older worker who's reliable, is going to show up for work, can solve their problem today. You know, you've been there, you've done it. So I mean, there's a lot of things that someone can do to really be proactive. And probably the number one thing I tell people to do when they're job searching is get out of the house, go and volunteer. Do something because employers hire people they know or people they know know and you never know where you're going to meet somebody and also if you're if you're interested in making a move into a nonprofit which frankly a lot of people over 50 are looking to find work with meaning and to make a difference at this stage in their lives if you're interested in that there's no better way to find work is you start by volunteering and I've had so many examples I could tell you of people who have turned those into full-time jobs and again, you know, so it's getting out, doing things. And also, don't be afraid of taking a part-time assignment. Get started, do something. Keep your resume alive. And again, talk to people, ask for help. And part of that is asking for a career coach. Part of that is asking your friends. You have to, boomers are afraid of bragging on themselves, but they're also afraid of asking for help.